Who wrote the pink letter, that letter that Jon Snow receives that enrages him so much that he rage quits the Night's Watch and is murdered for it? It's supposedly from Ramsay Bolton, but a lot of people think there's something else going on. Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we dive into George R. R. Martin's world of ice and fire in depth, as well as other great fantasy worlds like The Lord of the Rings and The Witcher. If you're new here, welcome. The Pink Letter, as it has become known, is a scroll sent to Jon Snow by Raven, halfway through his final chapter in A Dance with Dragons, the chapter at the end of which he is killed. The situation at Castle Black when it arrives is complex to say the least, with the Night's Watch, Wildlings, Stannis' men, Melisandre and more, all with competing agendas. Jon spends most of the first half of that chapter trying to get support for his plan to lead a ranging to Hardhome, to rescue the Wildlings there and the few Night's Watchmen he has already sent. But then the Pink Letter arrives, and it changes everything. Jon does a complete 180 degrees about turn, decides not to lead the ranging to Hardhome. Instead, he wants Tormund, a wildling, to lead some Night's Watchmen to do that, and he will instead lead another group to Winterfell to confront Ramsay Bolton. In doing so, he very clearly states that he knows he is breaking his vows. Within minutes, Night's Watch loyalists murder him, saying that they were doing it for the Watch. Regardless of any sympathy we may have for John here, we should make no mistake, he broke his Night's Watch oath, announced his intention to personally abandon the wall and put wildlings in charge of the Night's Watchmen. That's why he was murdered by his own men. So, what did the pink letter say that provoked such a reaction, such an about turn from John, and cost him his life? Well, it was addressed simply to Bastard, and this is what it said. Your false king is dead, bastard. He and all his hosts were smashed in seven days of battle. I have his magic sword, tell his red whore. Your false king's friends are dead, their heads upon the walls of Winterfell. Come see them, bastard. Your false king lied and so did you. You told the world you burned the king beyond the wall. Instead, you sent him to Winterfell to steal my bride from me. I will have my bride back. If you want Mance Raider back, come and get him. I have him in a cage for all the North to see, proof of your lies. The cage is cold, but I have made him a warm cloak from the skins of the six whores who came with him to Winterfell. I want my bride back. I want the False King's Queen. I want his daughter and his Red Witch. I want his Wildling Princess. I want his Little Prince, the Wildling Babe. And I want my Reek. Send them to me, bastard and I will not trouble you or your black crows. Keep them from me, and I will cut out your bastard's heart and eat it. It was signed Ramsay Bolton, Trueborn Lord of Winterfell. And John clearly thinks it is from Ramsay, that Ramsay is threatening him, and he reacts angrily to that. But I want to suggest that Jon Snow, as usual, knows nothing here. Let's start by considering whether this actually is from Ramsay, because there's a lot about this letter that feels wrong on closer analysis. We have seen two letters before this written by Ramsay, one to Asher and one to John. They are described using the exact same words, tightly rolled and sealed with a button of hard pink wax. On this one, we're not told it is tightly rolled, and the wax is smeared rather than in a hard button. In both other cases, Ramsay writes using blood as ink. In this one, he uses Maester's normal black ink. In the other two, he gets the other lords around him to also sign and affix their seal to it. Lady Dustin, Lady Sirwin, and no fewer than four Riswells. On this letter, there is none of that. And then there's the penmanship itself. His writing in the other letters is described as scrawling with a huge spiky hand. Again, George R. R. Martin uses the exact same words to describe them, so we know that's his style. In this letter, we don't get that description at all. In fact, the writing isn't noticeably huge or spiky or scrawling at all. It doesn't sound the same. In truth, nothing about this letter is the same as those other letters that we know come from Ramsay. Different seal, different ink, different writing style, different way of signing off. It's only the distinctive pink wax and the fact that it says it's from Ramsay that suggests it is. And the language and contents of the letter are also suspicious. First, the letter writer refers to the Night's Watch as Black Crows. 
This may seem fairly innocuous, but it's a point of fact that this simply isn't a phrase that a northern lord would use. Other than this letter, there are a total of 12 uses of that phrase in A Song of Ice and Fire. Eleven of them are by wildlings, Osha, Igrit, Rattleshirt, etc., and the other is someone quoting a wildling. And although there is a mention of flaying, the other threats and punishments don't seem to be very Ramsay-ish or Bolton-like. Heads on spikes, people in cages, even cannibalism. That's still gruesome, but not Ramsay's kind of gruesome. And what about the things he's demanding? Asking for his bride back and reek makes sense, as does Stannis's heir, and at a stretch Stannis's wife and Melisandre, but why on earth would he care about Val, the wildling, or Mance's son? And why is it so focused on Mance Raider? Because although this is supposedly a letter to John, it's actually more focused on Mance, about his fake burning, his secret mission, where he is now, what happened to his companions, his wife, his child. Why would Ramsay care so much about this wildling that he's already defeated? And if you dig about a bit, still more things seem strange. Seven days of battle seems curiously specific and also quite long given Stannis's current situation. Why Ramsay Bolton might think Jon Snow had any idea who Reek was. Why he's so certain Reek and Jane Poole, fake Arya, are at Winterfell. Why Clydus, the person who delivers the letter to Jon, is so scared. He had turned white and was shaking. This was a man who had lived through attacks from the undead, multiple battles and opened letters written in blood. Sure, the pink smear and single word bastard on the outside were disconcerting, but not that disconcerting. There's also the literary argument that it doesn't seem George R. R. Martin's style to not show a massive and hugely important battle when we have two POV characters there and instead just mention it in passing in a letter. So it seems pretty clear that George R. R. Martin wants us to look at the pink letter and conclude that there's something suspicious going on here. It's a fake. Someone has written to John pretending to be Ramsay. So if the letter probably isn't from Ramsay, who might it be from? Well, if it was a fake letter, it must have been sent for a reason. And that reason seems to be to get John angry. Get everyone at Castle Black angry, in fact. And get John to head south to Winterfell, not north to Hardhome. And it worked, inasmuch as John announced his intention to march on Winterfell, and a whole load of wildlings agreed to go with him. So... Who wants John to march on Winterfell, and knows that simply asking him to, or trying to tempt him in some way, won't work, hence the need for trickery? Someone who knows that if he can be made mad, he'll act on the spur of the moment, because that's what Jon Snow does. This already leaves one very clear set of suspects, Team Stannis. Stannis has already tried to persuade Jon to join him in going to Winterfell, twice in fact. Stannis wanted him to bring the wildlings with him to aid in the attack, and the reasons are pretty obvious. Stannis is outnumbered, quite significantly, and would be without the protection of Winterfell's high walls, but has decided that taking Winterfell is an absolute priority for him. Without Jon's support, there's every chance that Stannis would fail. Taking a quick step back, Stannis has two main aims at this point of the story, to defeat the others and to unite the kingdom behind him as king, and he doesn't think he'll be able to achieve either without Winterfell and the North uniting behind him. But the North is bitterly divided at this point in the books, and not able to offer much help at all against the others, and the Boltons are firmly supportive of the Lannisters, not Stannis. The solution Stannis sees is to get a Stark back into Winterfell that people can rally around, and if that Stark can bring an army with them, so much the better. But Sansa is missing, Bran and Rickon are presumed dead, some suspect otherwise, but there's no hint that Stannis does, and Arya is, as far as everyone is concerned, currently in a forced marriage to Ramsay Bolton. This leaves Jon Snow. Stannis tries to persuade Jon by offering to legitimise him and make him Lord of Winterfell, but to no avail. So, might Stannis have sent the letter, perhaps with help from Theon, to understand a bit about what Ramsay would demand? Well, theoretically, but this really isn't Stannis's style. If he wants Jon to do something, he will tell him to his face, as he did, not write a letter pretending to be someone else, hoping to emotionally manipulate and trick Jon into doing something he wouldn't otherwise do. No, that's not Stannis. 
but there are people on his side who want the same things as him and want to support him that are that sneaky and duplicitous. Some have suggested Wyman Manderley, though there's no obvious way for him to know about Mance's fake death or care about Mance's child. So, Melisandre. She often fakes her magic, was responsible for Mance's fake death, and bluffs her way through when she has doubts about her visions in the flames. Manipulating people to get them to support Stannis is exactly what she is about. And she confronted Jon earlier that same chapter to try to stop him from going to Hardhome, saying she saw disaster in her flames. Jon pushed back, saying she makes lots of mistakes. Where is Stannis? What of Rattleshirt and his spearwives? Where is my sister? All your questions shall be answered, she says. Look to the skies, Lord Snow, and when you have your answers, send to me. Winter is almost upon us now. I am your only hope. Look to the skies for news. That sounds like a raven. So she is telling him that he will get news via raven of Stannis, Mance and his spearwives, fake Arya, and then, a few pages later, John gets a letter with news of Stannis, Mance and his spearwives, fake Arya. It's all very suspicious. And Clydus, who delivers that letter, is scared to the point of shivering. Might she have written the letter and made Clydus deliver it with some trickery to make him scared? It's possible, but if perhaps she knew that a letter like that was on its way, she could say ominous things like, look to the skies, then send to me, I am your only hope, and come across as even more mysterious and magical. How could she know, though, that a letter is coming? Well, she has sent Mance Raider down to Winterfell to rescue who they think is Arya, a plan Melisandre explicitly says is an attempt to win Jon's trust. All through this period, she is trying desperately to get Jon on their side and get him to support Stannis, but Jon will not budge. This is just her latest attempt. The irony here is that Jon didn't do the one thing she and the letter told him to do when he got it, talk to her about it. She had told him to send to me, and the letter itself says, tell your red whore, but he doesn't do either. Or even, it has to be said, tell Selyse that her husband or Shireen that her father is apparently dead. No, John instead has a two-hour meeting with his closest allies, and then a massive meeting of the Night's Watch and Wildlings. Not his finest hour. So let's put all of this together. We can't say with 100% certainty, but it seems unlikely that the pink letter was actually written by Ramsay. It's just very different from the other letters he wrote, and the type of threats and language use are also unlike him, which calls into question all the news contained in it. Stannis' death, the seven-day battle, and so on. Instead, the most likely culprit here is Melisandre, who has a track record of deceit and desperately wants Jon to head down to Winterfell. Although the idea was hers, the person who actually wrote it and sent it was probably Mance Raider, which explains why it uses wildling colloquialisms that Ramsay probably wouldn't, and focuses less on Stannis and more on Mance's fake death. Why Mance was in Winterfell, Mance's spearwives, where Mance is now, how John could get Mance back, Mance's lover's sister, Mance's child. You get the idea, there's a lot about Mance in this letter. It makes you wonder if Mance perhaps wrote it. The Pink Letter is important because it changes the course of history in Castle Black, preventing John from going to Hardhome and leading, I think unexpectedly to those who wrote it, to John's assassination. It must have seemed like a good idea, dreamed up by Melisandre, written by Mance, intending to get Jon to quit the Night's Watch and march on Winterfell. And it did prompt the desired reaction in Jon, but that just got him killed. If you'd like more A Song of Ice and Fire videos, there's a playlist appearing now on the left of your screen. Or to support this channel, thank you. There's a link to my Patreon on the right of your screen. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.